20th regular meeting of the 2019-2020 Common Council to order. Would the clerk please read the quote for the day? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The only secret behind a good day is a good attitude. And the clerk also informed me that you should notice the fact that our 20th meeting of the year is being held on January 20th of 2020. <laughs> Uh, next item is for the clerk to call the roll. There are nine present. And uh, Alderperson uh, Trey is uh, going to be excused. Um, next is the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand and join me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next item on the agenda is approval of the minutes from our last council meeting. All the person Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to approve. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on those minutes? Seeing none. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Next item is mayor's appointments. I'll turn it over to city attorney Charles Adams. One appointment, uh, one appointment uh, from the mayor submitting the following appointment for your consideration. Katie Gladoski to be considered for appointment to the Harbor Center Business Improvement District Board to fill a vacancy with the term expiring on December 31, 2021. Thank you, and that will lie over. Next item is public forum. City Clerk. There's no one this evening. Okay, then we'll move on with mayor's announcements. Um, just a couple of uh, items here. Uh, Christmas tree recycling is uh, going to conclude in the end of January. Christmas trees are picked up on the same day as your garbage pickup. Christmas trees and wreaths are picked up at the curb only. There's no alley pickup. Uh, winter shoveling rules, just want to remind residents with the recent snowfall that you need to shovel out the snow from fire hydrants either on your property or nearby. Uh, residents also need to shovel their sidewalks and open up the crosswalks where necessary. Please consider applying some salt on the sidewalks uh, for the public to walk on. Uh, there's a special event coming up uh, this summer called Love Your Neighbor Work Camp and they are accepting applications now through the end of January, for those who are interested in being considered for home improvement assistance, this program is being offered by Fountain Park Church in partnership with other area churches. And some of you may have noticed that there's uh, recycling charges on your water bill. So this is something new, a recycling charge of $4 per month and $12 per quarter has been added to your first quarter watering bills. Uh, the water utility sends out one third of the bills each month during the quarter. And this recycling charge will be used to purchase the recycling carts that will be distributed uh, to residents uh, when the automated refuse collection system is rolled out. And they should start to see those being delivered in mid-April. The fee will also cover the cost of the new trucks and the staff and labor that's used on the recycling cart pickup routes. And then the January statements have been sent out already and February and March statements will follow and then everyone will have their notice of that charge for the first quarter of the year. Next, uh, we're going to be moving on to a hearing. This is uh, hearing number six of 1920 pursuant to a notice published in the personal notices sent out by the city clerk. There is a hearing scheduled for this evening to amend the city's of Sheboygan's official zoning map to change the use district classification of a property located at 1108 South Wildwood Avenue from class urban industrial to class suburban office. Is there anyone wishing to be heard? Is there anyone wishing to be heard? Is there anyone wishing to be heard? Seeing none, I'd call on Alderperson Wolf to make a motion to close the hearing. Thank you, Mayor, and make a motion to close. Uh, second. Thank you for that motion and support. All those in favor of closing the hearing, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? That hearing is closed. Next, we'll move on to the consent agenda, which will include items 3.2 through 3.13. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to receive and file all ROs, receive all <coughs> RCs, and adopt all resolutions and ordinances. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. 
Is there any discussion on any of those items in the consent agenda? Seeing none, then we'll put the motion on the floor. Will the clerk please call the roll for passage? Nine eyes. Motion passes. Moving on to reports of officers. Uh, item 4.1 is RO number 137 of 1920 by the City Planning Commission to whom was referred General Ordinance number 38 of 1920 by Alder Persons Decker and RO number 119 of 1920 by the City Clerk. Amending the City of Sheboygan official zoning map uh, of the Sheboygan zoning ordinance to change the use district classification of property located at 1108 South Wildwood Avenue, parcel 59281215710 from class urban industrial to class suburban office classification and recommends receiving the RO and adopting the ordinance. Alderperson Boring. Thank you, Mayor. Receive the RO and adopt the ordinance. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Nine eyes. Motion passes. Item 4.2 is RO number 138 of 1920 by the City Planning Commission to whom is referred General Ordinance number 41 of 1920 by Alderperson Donahue and RO number 138 of 1920 by the City Clerk granting Schrader and Holt Architects LLC <coughs> as its successors and assigns the privilege of encroaching upon described portions of Niagara Avenue on the property located at 832 North A Street in the city of Sheboygan for the purpose of constructing a balcony and recommends receiving the RO and adopting the ordinance and, re and amending to reflect the encroachment be granted to the owner of the building, James Dubois, and his heirs and assigns. Alderperson Bourne. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to receive the <coughs> RO and adopt the substitute ordinance. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. That's on the floor. Is there any discussion? <clears throat> Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? <clears throat> Nine eyes. Motion passes. Items 4.3 through 4.7 will be referred to various committees. Under resolutions, uh, items 5.1 through 5.7 will be referred to various committees. Moving on to reports of officers, item 6.1 is RC number 223 of 1920 by the Finance and Personnel Committee. To whom is referred resolution number 141 of 1920 <coughs> um, by Older persons Donahue and Boren, authorizing the acceptance of $120,000 in funds from Festival Foods towards the 1920, 20, 1920, rather 2020, the 2021 and 2022 City Independence Day celebrations, and recommends adopting the resolution. Older person Donahue. Uh, thank you. I uh, move that uh, we receive the report of the committee and adopt the resolution with deep gratitude to Festival Foods for its uh, quite extraordinary generosity to the city and its uh, residents. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Uh, is, is there any discussion on the motion? Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I, I also want to thank uh, Festival Foods for the several years that they've been uh, graciously and generously <coughs> providing the fireworks uh, this is obviously, it's a cost to them. Um, they've been doing it for quite a few years, and it's, it's very generous of them to support the city um, during this great festival. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. Seeing no other discussion, would the clerk please call the roll? Nine eyes. Motion passes. 
Item 6.2 is RC number 234 of 1920 by the Public Works Committee. Tumas referred direct referral number, a resolution number 149 of 1920 by all the persons Wolf and Sorensen authorizing the appropriate city <coughs> officials to enter into a contract with Vinton Construction Company regarding street and utility uh, replacement on Illinois Avenue, Maryland Avenue, South 10th Street, and South 11th Street in the vicinity of the Badger State Lofts development and recommends adopting the resolution. Alderperson Wolf. <coughs> Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to receive the RC and adopt the resolution. Is there second. a second? Very good. We have a motion in support. Is there any discussion on that motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? Nine eyes. Motion passes. Item 6.3 is RC number 235 of 1920 by the Licensing <coughs> Hearings and Public Safety Committee. Tumors referred General Ordinance number 39 of 1920 by Alderperson Sorensen and Mitchell, amending various sections of Article 3, Chapter 29 of the Sheboygan Municipal Code as to require a <coughs> license for installing and repairing of low voltage installations in commercial buildings and provide a fee for certain inspections and reinspections for such installments and recommends adopting the ordinance. Alderperson Sorensen. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to receive the report of the committee and adopt the ordinance. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Alderperson Savaglio. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, can I ask several questions of um, our, our city planning person, Chad Palaszczuk? Go ahead. What are your questions? Thank you. Um, first, what's the purpose of requiring the inspection on low voltage lines? There you go. The mic is yours. The reason for the inspection is because in commercial buildings, there's a, we've noticed over time that there's a number of uh, places where there's really no regulation in how they're installing them. And the uh, workmanship that's being done in installing low voltage wires. Now these are the wires we're talking about for computers and point of service systems and those types of things in commercial buildings um, that the work has not been, uh, how should we say, it's satisfactory to uh, meeting the National Electric Code. Thank you. Now, um, are phone lines, Ethernet lines, and cable lines included in this? Yes. And uh, in 2019, how many cases of damage or injury were reported uh, in, due to low voltage lines like cable, internet, or phone lines? I can't answer that. Uh, would you tell me it's closer to zero or higher than that? I, I don't know. Uh, thank you. Uh, I'd just like to, to state here that I believe that um, requiring uh, regulation for the purpose of health and safety on this uh, is um, beyond the scope of what we should be doing. It seems that uh, the purpose of having an inspection should be to make sure that our <coughs> communities and the people who own the buildings next stay safe um, when they buy a, a, a property. And I'll be voting against this. Thank you for those comments. Alderperson Sorensen. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> I guess my question is directed towards Chad as well. Um, Chad, do other cities um, have similar ordinances like this in place? Yes, most most cities do. Okay, especially the cities our size. Was, was, can you help me better understand the process of if someone is putting in, you know, just a simple <clears throat> Ethernet line? Is is there sort of a scope or a line that is drawn based on mm -hmm. on the project? size if it's just a small one little off, offshoot thing do they have to go through the whole inspection there's a, process too no there's a minimum for work that they can do without do it without having to pull a permit and it follows the same requirements as electrical inspections can you explain what that i believe it's $400 okay. so if the project is under $400 it's not required to pull a permit okay 
Thank you. Is Sorry, it's $500. Discussion? Okay, then I sense we're ready to vote on this. Although, would you please call the roll? Jim, you wanted to make a comment? Before when you were on the consent agenda, I, uh, it's not going to change how I vote on it, but I thought it might be interest, of interest to the rest of the council, number 313, with reestablishing that bulkhead down on Broughton Drive. And I would, I would, Chad gave me a little bit of an explanation before the meeting, and possibly Attorney Adams might also. I guess my, my real question on it is, how would this affect our ongo ongoing negotiations with the state regarding the armory? Uh, we'll, we'll get the vote here first, and then we'll uh, go back to All that right, item. Thank you. Uh, City Clerk? Um, vote on 6.3 is eight ayes, one no. That motion passes, and we'll take your motion to reconsider 313. And uh, appreciate your question, and I'll ask Chad Pelichek to respond. What we're doing here, well, first of all, this document is being uh, filed because we are changing the bulkhead line that was originally presented to the Public Works Committee. Um, so there'll be a new line uh, drawn with a legal description coming back at a future uh, council meeting for you to take up the action. It was, it was cleaner just to file this document than to try to amend it. This is to establish the shoreline along the north side of the river from basically the Coast Guard Station to around the bend at North Point Drive. Um, so this will, in all the documentation and research that we could find, there has never been an ordinance passed that established the shoreline. So this is a step in trying to figure out where the actual shoreline is, um, whether it's related to the armory or all the properties along Broughton Drive, uh, just for the city purposes to have the shoreline established makes sense. Alder person born, we need a motion to reconsider this, the city attorney tells me. Oh, if you... motion to reconsider. Is there a second? Second. Thank you very much. All those in favor of reconsideration, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Nay. Motion Nay. passes. Nay. Nay. Motion passes. Okay, uh, is, did that answer all your, your items? Yes, and unless Attorney Adams had anything you wanted to add. Mr. Adams? Um, no, I, I don't have anything to add. Okay. Okay. Very good. Then we'll uh, continue on with other matters. You have, author vote. You, have, you, have a, you, you reconsidered it, so now you have to vote on it, on the, the motion. Oh, okay. So uh, all those in favor <laughs> of 313, we need, please. We need the motion first. Okay. So I'll file the motion for 13. Is there, we have a motion to file and a second. Is there any further discussion on the motion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. So, you, so just to be clear, you filed 313. That's, that's what you've done. We filed it before, filed. actually. We filed it actually before, but I didn't have any problem with the filing. I had a question. I slipped up. I should have asked it earlier. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, then we'll go on with other matters authorized by law. Mm -hmm. Attorney Adams. Uh, just one, 7.1 .1 is an RO submitting various license applications for the period ending December 31, 2020 and June 30, 2021. That'll be referred to the licensing hearings and public safety committee. And then next we have a contemplated closed session, Alder Person Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to convene in closed session under the exemption provided in section 19.85, sub 1, sub E, Wisconsin stats, where the competitive and bargaining reasons require a closed session related to the possible sale of the city-owned property at 229 South Pier Drive and the possible purchase of property known as the tax parcel number 59030454492. Second. Thank you for that uh, motion and support. All those in favor, or rather, please call the roll on this one. Uh, 
All eyes. Motion passes. Uh, council will then adjourn, and uh, the this will end our TV broadcast for this evening. Council plans to adjourn in closed session. Thank you very much.